And welcome back. Now, the Cradle of Humankind World Heritage Site has described Dr. Kinelwe Mulipiane as a bona fide uh, adventurer who has scuba dived through shipwrecks off the Cape Coast, had a narrow escape from a leopard while on an archaeological survey, and also added her name to the impressive roster of underground astronauts exploring the world-famous Rising Star Cave system in the Cradle of Humankind. Now, she's also been recognized as a trailblazer by the prestigious National Geographic Society and was recently named the National Geographic Society's 2021 Emerging Explorer. So to find out more about her achievements and also what it takes to be a young South African archaeologist and biological anthropologist, we joined by Dr. Kinelwe Mulipiane. Thanks so much for your time, Dr. Mulipiane. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning. So, being chased by a leopard. Let's start there. What was going on? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? To be honest, I really do think this was my lecturer trying to get me back to base camp very quickly. Um, this was my first year in the field at university and we were out surveying in the middle of nowhere. And we had taken a very long route back to camp. And, you know, like normal first years, we're moaning and complaining. And he was just like, listen, we're being stalked by a leopard. So um, we need to climb up this mountain very quickly. Um, and, you know, just by saying that we're being stalked by a leopard, I was the first person up that mountain and over. I was not about to be eaten. So, yeah, that's, that's the story. <laughs> But, you know, it all sounds so adventurous your entire life. But you're, of course, an <laughs> archaeologist and a, um, a biological anthropologist. So what does your job entail on any given day? On any given day, it's so different every day. So um, it is quite adventurous. Uh, at the moment, I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the Centre for the Exploration of the Deep Human Journey. Adverts. And basically, my job is to go out into cave systems looking for fossils. And when we do find fossils, studying them and trying to figure out how they fit into our family tree. Mm. And, 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 you know, talk to us about that. And, and, and what, what first drew you uh, to archaeology? Because uh, naturally, it's not something that uh, black people would gravitate towards. It's still something that we are coming into understanding. And um, I don't know how many uh, people are actually taking that field of study at the moment, but what attracted you to it? Wow. Um, I was seven years old when I first found out what, or when I first came across the, the word archaeology. Um, so my mom and I were sitting Saturday morning watching cartoons and we came across um, the episodes of Tintin, the adventures of Tintin. And the episode was Cigars of the Pharaoh. And that really hooked me. And even though Tintin is not an archaeologist, he's more of a journalist. But a lot of the, the themes in that cartoon were adventure-based and exploration. And I just, I kept on saying that that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. Uh, my mom was like, oh, you want to be an archaeologist? And I'm like, that word. I couldn't say it then, but I'm like, yes, <laughs> that word. That's what I want to be. Um, and ever since then, every time someone says, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm like, I want to be an archaeologist. Um, and now when someone says what, what it is that you want to be when you grow up, I'm not quite sure what to say because I am an archaeologist. Um, a couple of years ago, I said that I wanted to be an explorer. And now it's finally happened. So, you know, the, the, the power of just uh, putting things out into the universe, you know what they say, the law of attraction, the universe conspires to uh, give yeah, you yeah, that which is. you ask for. Uh, but, you know, when, when still when one thinks about archaeology, for example, um, not to be unkind, but you think of old white men, you know, um, who don't really uh, socialize much, you know, care more for the bones and whatever other discoveries they may have. How has that evolved? And, and, and how have you found, you know, the going within the field and fitting in? You know, it's, it's been tough fitting in for many, many years. I've always been the only black person in class. 
or the only black person that's taking it seriously. Um, so, but I just, I was very in tune with what it is that I wanted. So I, I kept to the, to the task and I never ventured sideways from that. Um, archaeology and paleoanthropology is slowly transforming. Um, we do need to be more active um, in transforming the science. So it's not just old white men uh, looking at bones and telling their version of the story. Um, because it is South Africa and it's a field of science that really needs to be transformed and have our history being told by a diverse group of people. And that's that's coming along very slowly. Um, I guess I, just based on where I am in life, I, I guess I'm that first generation of archaeologists that are of colour in the country. Mm. And, you know, going forward, if there are any young adults, uh, children at school, maybe watching this, listening to you right now, and they haven't decided yet, you know, struggling to find what to do with their lives. I always said, I envy people like yourself, who at the age of seven knew exactly what they wanted to do. Some of us just take a lot longer to decide what it is that we want to do. So would you encourage young people to get into this field? And if so, you know, what would you say to attract them? Well, look, um, yes, I, I discovered my passion at a very young age, but it wasn't easy to get here. Um, and to be fair, I was not interested in fossils. I had to go through so much. I had to be really put down in the depths of my PhD, struggling for me to realize that, hey, I actually... I don't want to give this up. I don't, I don't want to lose this, uh, which made me work that much harder. Um, there really is a piece of advice. Let it happen. Like, just, just put it out there into the universe. Trust that it will happen and work towards it. And things generally do work out in the end somehow. And then, you know, Dr. Mulapiani, uh, you've also been named as the Natural Geographic uh, uh, Society Emerging Explorer for 2021. So uh, talk to us about, you know, that accolade and, and, and what it means to you. Well, uh, it is an incredible honour to be recognised by National Geographic as a global change maker. That's how they'd like to describe us, global change makers, young individuals with big ideas changing the world. Um, and I never really considered myself to be a person with big ideas. I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. <laughs> I just wanted to do archaeology. And it was that tenacity, I think, um, and that willingness to go into many adventures and try a whole bunch of things. I was scuba diving in... Um, shipwrecks, I was crawling around through caves, I was doing a lot um, and that really caught National Geographic's eye, I guess um, and it's an incredible opportunity, like I said before and I'm really hoping to use that opportunity and this platform to really encourage more people of colour into paleoanthropology Mm. And, and, and just your uh, postdoctoral studies at the moment, oh, oh, what is your research on? So at the moment, um, I'm still working on the UW105 site. That's on the same location as Rising Star. Uh, it's not the same cave, but it's the same region. Uh, still working there, uh, pulling out lots of fossils and trying to figure out what's happening on this site. It's very different from... Um, the rising star complex, which is interesting. Uh, and then I'm also planning to head back to Gladysville. I've never worked at Gladysville. Um, this site is in the cradle of humankind as well. And people like Robert Broom and Professor Lee Berger have worked at that site. So I'm really excited to re-explore that cave and see what's left to discover. Mm. And uh, you're in great company there with uh, the gentleman that you've just mentioned. I mean, uh, world-renowned, and here you are world-renowned, so it's all happening there. But it is Youth Month, and, you know, as a young person yourself, 
what message do you have for the youth of South Africa who are really going through a lot at the moment, battling uh, many odds? Yo, like, it, it's tough. Um, and it will continue to be rough. But you will get through it. A lot of the times we go through the trials and tribulations that we are because it's making us stronger for what's happening ahead. So if there's anything I have to say, just just keep strong, keep the faith. And it does get better. You might not believe it, but it really does get better. Well, thank you so much uh, for your time this morning. We wish you well and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you crawling through more caves and uh, doing all sorts of things uh, soon. But thanks so much for your time this morning. Thank you so much. And uh, that, of course, was Dr. Kinelwe Molopiane, a uh, postdoctoral research fellow at the Center for the Exploration of Deep Human Journey at uh, Wits University. And she was talking to us about her achievements as a young South African woman, a trailblazer of note in the field of archaeology and biological anthropology. So, oh, yeah, I, I, I just love stories like these and um, absolutely great way to, you know, take us into the weekend. But uh, let's take a break before we bring you some other stories here on Morning Live.